glance into Europe's history. And we can see that it was only after centuries of, of bloody battles and religious intolerance that we finally gained religious freedom in Europe. But just a few short years into this new era of human rights and so-called equality, and we are seeing that this religious freedom, which has been so hard fought for over the centuries, is being quickly eroded. And in the past decade in Europe, we have been on a, a seemingly never-ending journey towards equality. We've seen more and more legislation be passed. It began in large part in a very small clause in the Amsterdam Treaty of 1997. And from there, it has been adopted in European directives, um, two directives in the year 2000, and legislation throughout the whole of the European Union and beyond. And we are going further and further uh, into this realm of equality and anti-discrimination. And many of us, including myself, are really wondering where it's all leading to and, and when it's going to end. But who have been the people that have been discriminated against um, in this anti-discrimination legislation? The, the answer, undoubtedly, has been Christians. And the chief reason, the, the main reason why Christians have not been tolerated in this new age of tolerance is because of their traditional views on marriage and on the family. And in particular, it has to be said, on their traditional views on homosexual behavior. Their views are considered intolerant. And the current mayor of London, Boris Johnson, uh, he was very honest in admitting this uh, just last month. Um, there was a bus campaign run by a, a um, pro-homosexual activist group um, that um, proposed, uh, it said something along the lines of, um, we're gay, get over it. And some Christian groups got together and wanted to put uh, some posters on the buses as well, saying, we're ex-gay, get over it. Now, while the pro-homosexual posters were allowed and promoted, the Christian posters were banned. And what did uh, Mayor Boris Johnson say? Well, he said, London is one of the most tolerant cities in the world, and is intolerant of intolerance. <laughs> and he just admitted it in a way that, that Boris Johnson will do. Now, aside from being self-evidently absurd, this, this attitude continues to have a, a profound effect on the lives of Christian believers throughout Europe. You know, in the name of tolerance and non-discrimination, we've seen uh, Christians dismissed from work, we've seen them sued, investigated by the police, and the charitable organizations that they run shut down and have funding withdrawn. And rather than being seen as the real intolerance that it is, Christians are frequently portrayed as wanting to be above the law, wanting to have special and legal loopholes. But what instead we're looking for is not to be above the law, but Christians wanting to be treated like everybody else. We're wanting to be tolerated along with everybody else. And when we see some of the cases that have involved Christians, we can see that a little bit of tolerance in the true sense of the word would have gone a long, long way. i uh, just mention uh, one of the cases um, that is now at the European Court of Human Rights, as Gudrun said. Uh, her name is Lillian Ladelli. She was a, a Christian registrar of the births, deaths, and marriages in the UK. And uh, when the UK government passed civil partnership laws, um, Ms. Ladelli said she had a conscientious objection from providing those services. She would do the other work, but was it possible for a colleague to fill in on those times when she'd have to do the same-sex partnerships? Well, it was abundantly clear that her position could have been tolerated. There were 19 <coughs> registrars, and this work represented less than 5% of her job. So, working a timetable where she could have held on to her Christian conviction and held on to her job would not have been a problem at all. But instead, she was ultimately dismissed from work. That, that case went all the way to our Court of Appeal, rejected by the Supreme Court, and is now before the European Court of Human Rights. And the same intolerance has been shown to many other Christian employees in the UK and throughout Europe. Let me just list a few of the cases that we've seen 
in the last few years. A, a relationship counsellor who refused to give same-sex couples sexual therapy was dismissed from work for gross misconduct. We've seen a, a local magistrate who wanted to uh, abstain from placing children with same-sex couples having to resign from his job. We've seen a, a very experienced paediatrician who could not in good conscience sit on an adoption panel where she would have to place children with same-sex couples, she was forced to resign from her position. And we've seen dedicated Christian foster carers being told that they would not be able to foster children because of their views on homosexual behavior. And these are the cases that are taking place right now in Europe in the area of employment. But this, these sort of cases we will see expand drastically into other areas um, if a new uh, European directive is passed, and I just want to spend a couple of minutes of my time talking about this directive, because it will expand the European Union's anti-discrimination law from employment and into the field of the provision of goods and services. And as such, there is a grave threat to religious freedom and to the national family. And how do I know this? How do I know this with certainty? Because some of the countries in the EU have already passed similar laws to the directive. And when we look at those countries, we can see quite clearly the route that the European Union will go down. And uh, again, the UK is one of the countries that has passed anti-discrimination laws in the provision of goods and services. Let me give you one example of how these laws work. The UK Catholic Adoption Agency has been in existence for over 100 years doing fantastic work in the community, placing children, uh, often the most difficult children to place. The Catholic Adoption Agency stepped in and found homes for them. They were widely recognized as being some of the best in the country. But when our laws were changed, the government said to these Catholic Adoption Agencies, you have to place children with same-sex couples. And they said, that, that goes against our religious ethos. We, we place children with married couples, and, and that's what we've been doing for 100 years. Well, could these same-sex couples have gone to another adoption agency? Yes, there were <coughs> numerous other adoption agencies available to them, but that wasn't good enough. These Catholic adoption agencies were told that they would either have to place children with same-sex couples against their religious ethos, or they would lose funding and be shut down. And now, less than five years since these laws were passed in the UK, all of the Catholic adoption agencies in England have been forced to close or remove their religious ethos. No tolerance was shown to them, and it is impossible to see how anyone could have benefited from this position. The government now telling us that there are not enough adoption agencies doing this work for placing children in homes. So I mention these to you as some examples of um, the cases that we will see if this directive is passed. And that's why I want to mention this to you today, purely on a practical level, because we look at the laws that have been passed in regards to employment, and they, they have been passed. Maybe they'll be repealed, but it will take a long time. But we can all do work right now to stop the Equal Treatment Directive from being adopted. It requires all of the EU member states to sign off on it, which means representing, as we do, many different European Union countries here, we need to speak to our political leaders and we need to make sure that they do not sign off on this directive. There's already been resolutions passed in Germany, France and the Czech Republic against this directive and we want to see many more countries signing off resolutions saying they will not sign it until this resolution is stopped and until we can find true tolerance again in Europe and true acceptance of Christians so they can freely live out their faith. Thank you.